I'm sure we will enjoy the message I have for you. It's not a sermon, it's an admonition or a mini sermon. I have decided to title this message The David Adventure. Let's call it part one. I'm excited, I'm sure we are going to come back to it when we meet again. So, I will summarize 1 Samuel 25. I want to ask you to trust my summary uh, as opposed to reading the whole chapter, which we could do, but we would be wasting time because we have read this chapter so many times ago uh, before, and I also am very familiar with this passage. David was fleeing away from Saul. Saul was trying to kill David because Saul had discovered that God had committed himself to killing uh, him or to replacing Saul as the king of Israel with David. So this uh, caused David to be running away and when David, uh, in the process of his running away, he ended up in Mount Carmel. Uh, there was a man in Maon who was a man of great stature. Verse 2 says there was a man in Maon. Let's read it, Elder. And there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great. The man was very great. So I would like us to consider the caliber of, of Nabal. Yes. The type of man that Nabal was. Yes. That the Bible acknowledges his greatness. Yes. Now, the word great in verse number two means that Nabal was rich. Yes. He wasn't just rich, like he owned uh, some few cars, maybe three, four cars, mm -hmm. uh, Lamborghinis and, and Rolls Royces. He was rich. Yes. So rich that he was the richest man in Camel. Yes. If you want to discover how rich Naba was, go and read it again slowly. Yes. There are so many indicators to the wealth of Nabal. Yes. Yes. The man was very great, he, and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Yes. Now the name of the man was Nabal. Yes. And the name of his wife, Abigail. Yes. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance, but the man was chelish and evil in his doings, and ah. he was of the house of Caleb. Ah, yeah, yeah. So the, the word chelish means ash. Yes. He was ash. We could say Nabal was um, mean yes. and not hospitable, yes. arrogant, aggressive, stubborn, yes. short-tempered, those are the characteristics <laughs> of Naba. Yes. So we would want to ask why on earth would the writer of this book yes. tell us about the beauty of another man's wife? Yes. <laughs> But let's also remember that a man of his countenance, a man of his stature, yes. was obviously going to marry a beautiful woman. Yes. Because when you are rich, you attract beautiful women. Yes. Huh? Yes. <laughs> but it gives us some also time to ask what was God doing yes. in uh, making these two people of opposed character traits mm -hmm. to become husband and wife. <laughs> the wife is beautiful 
end of good understanding. Yes. The man is short-tempered, yes. rude, arrogant, mean, yes. and evil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he was of the house of Caleb. Of Caleb. Yes. Now, you might want to then ask something yes. that we might never have considered before. Yes. You want to try it? To why is the writer talked about him being from the house of Caleb? Yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe because of the name Caleb. All right. All right, uh, we don't have time. I could have opened the floor for believers to try. Yes. But the point of this scripture is that David did not marry Abigail from another tribe. <laughs> Did you consider that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Caleb is a son of Judah. Yes. And David is a son of Judah. Yes. Marrying Abigail is not an anomaly. <laughs> it goes back yes. to family duty. Yes. Rufur Yes. David Mukana. <laughs> but let's prove if Joshua, if Caleb is of the tribe of Judah, verse 6, Numbers chapter number 13. Yes. Of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephone. Of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephune. Joshua chapter 14, verse 6 and 7. We just want to make sure that these things yes. are constructed properly. Verse 6 and 7, yes. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. The children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephune. Caleb, the son of Jephune. The Kenizzite said unto The Kenizzite, unto yes. Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in... All right, all Kadesh right, all Bania. right. We don't have to pursue these things any further. I I love to, uh, to, to be very clear. Yes. I also love to be emphatic on the uh, trails. Have you realized, Elder, that the method I use in preaching is more of a Bible study yes. than just <laughs> presenting a sermon? Yes, it's of a Bible study. It's very thorough. It's very thorough. Yes. And also, we try as much as we can to bring the believers Yes. into the Bible study. Yes. Have you realized that? Yes. yes. The idea is to formulate, to inculcate a culture yes. of just being meticulous, thorough, mm. and exhaustive yes. so that we don't have a sermon that is full of holes yes. which can be poked easily yes. when we look at... Um, the, the 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 manner in which our people are used to to preaching a minister finds a scripture he doesn't want to spend time on that scripture is quickly uh, engulfed in his own imaginations and his theories mm -hmm. and people are not able to tell that what we are hearing is not from the bible mm -hmm. this is what the preacher has decided to present under the guise yes. that it's from God. Yes. So the scripture is there to ratify an opinion. The message is not from the scripture. The message is from the man of God. Yeah. So we don't want such a smoke screen. Yes. 
First Chronicles chapter 4 details the children of Judah, the genealogy of Judah, the genealogy, the generation of Judah. The sons of Judah are as follows. This is First Chronicles chapter 4. Phares, Hezron, Kami, Ye, and Shobal. Yes. And Ria, the son of Shobal, beget Jath, and Jath beget Ahu, Ahumai, and Lad. These are the family of the Zorathites, and these were of the father of Itam, Jezreel, and Ishma, and Idbash, and the name of their sister was Hezel, Hezel Pony. And Penuel, the father of Jido, and Isa, the father of Usha, these are the sons of He, the firstborn of Ephrata, the father of Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> and Asha, the father of Tekoa, and two wives, Hela and Nara. And Nara bear him Ahuzam, and Epha, and Temeni, and Haashtari. These were the sons of Nara, yes. the seven. And the sons of Hela were Zereth, Zereth, and Je Jezoa. Yes. And Ethnan, Ethna, and Koz beget Anub, Anub, and Zobeba. Yes. And the families of Ahio, the son of Harum, Harum, and Jabesh was more honorable than his brethren. All right. And his mother called his name Jabez. Let's leave about what Jabez did. It's for another day. Verse eleven. And Kelubi. The, Chelub. And Chelub, the brother of Shua, beget Meha. Meha. Which was the father of Eshton. Eshton. And Eshton beget Betrafa. Betrafa. And Pasia. Pasia. And Tehina. Tehina. The father of Irnahash. Irnahash. These are the men of Re Reka. Reka. And the sons of Kenaz. The sons of Kenaz. Othiniel. Othiniel. And Seraya. Seraya. And the sons of Othiniel. Hathath. Hathath. And Mionothai. Yes. Beget Ophra. Ophra. And Seraya beget Joab. Joab. The father of the valley of the Charashashim. Yes. For they were craftsmen. Yes. And the sons of Caleb, the son of Jephun, Iru, Ela, and Nam, and the sons of Ela, even Kenaz. Yes. So, you may go the, into this, continue, yes. up to verse number 21, where he says, the sons of Shela, the son of Judah, were A, the father of Leka, Lad, uh, the father of Maresha, and the families of the house of them, wrought fine linen of the house of Ashbia. Yes. So, if you are not careful, you would not see that verse number one says the sons of Judah, yes. and then he says the Pharisees, yes. Hezron, and Cam. Yes. So from verse number one, we are looking at the sons of Pharisees. Yes. And then when you come to verse number 21, you are now reading about the sons of Shelah. Yes. And you will not remember that Shela is older than Phares and Zara. Because Phares and Zara were twins yes. born to Judah through Tamar. Yes. After Judah had resisted or refrained from giving Shela to Tamar. Yes. So Shela is a patriarch. Yes. Phares is a patriarch. Yes. Zara is a patriarch. Yes. So you may also need to continue reading about the names of these sons, but not forgetting that there were now three patriarchs born in the house of Judah. Yes. These are Zerah, Zera, Zera, Phares, and Shelah. Yes. Because Onan and A died, died yes. without children. Yes. But for those who want to be meticulous with the scripture, I would like you a uh, to read verse 21. And when you read verse 21, you will remember the law of family duty. Yes. A died without a child. Yes. And the father of this family, Judah, said to honor his younger son, marry your brother's widow. Yes. 
to raise children for your late brother who died without a child. Yeah. Onan was disobedient to his father. Yes. He spilled the seed to the ground. Yes. And the story sounded like it ended and concluded. Yes. Because Tamar finally gave birth to two sons. Yes. But none of those two sons were named after A. Yes. Because a father does not raise seed yes. for a late son. Yes. It's a duty <laughs> of the younger brother. brother. Yes. Verse 21 again. The sons of Shela. The sons of Shela. The son of Judah. What way. was what was their names? A, the father of Leka. <laughs> <laughs> so he I mean, named his first, his first born after A, his brother. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <yeah>. uh, <laughs> Yes, the love of the family Judah. Who can decide to tease America? Rodi onu go shimanya ininda wa this. That's the end. Yes. God will never change his law. Yes. Because some uh, 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 sinners yes. are finding these words or these counsels of God yeah. strange yes. on account of where you are coming from. God could have said, no, the idea of raising his name, let's end it, <laughs> because it has brought so much trouble <laughs> in Judah's house. Yeah. Zekuti era kafasi na mngana. Airo venye ayo. Yes. Uyo shela ripapo. Mwana waki wakutanga shela. Ano nzi era. First born ya juda. Yes. Zekuti haka itu kwa ere na tamari yato imwe nyaya. Mkazi waka rura shela ye. Yes. Haka toshika mbama juda. Mine chikweti. Ama imungana. Mumusha muno mune problem. Yes. Mkomo edu haka afa. Yes. Mkomo edu afa. Tokuwa mningi na wake aramba kuita mngana yes. na mai guru. Yes. Shuno mtemu wa mwara ujijwe. <laughs> Nekuti mumusha maita banu wa sina msoro. Yes. Saka tuita say, ah, nyayiri po ndiye kuti. Tika teta mwana wa kutanga ezezi. Mm. Aswedu. Yes. Mwana wa era. Yes. Toto mpa zitara mkoma. Yes. Nekuti aswite nderwe kuti crown prince atakatiki. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Crown Prince and Zagati. Yeah, we are Papa Crown Prince. Yes. The same issue that was done in the house of Elimelech. Yes. That they could not allow the name of Malon yes. to disappear. Yes. The same happened in the house of Judah again. Yes. They could not allow A yes. to be extinct. Zitara era, Zagati. Uyo Shela, Papa. <laughs> 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 Ndotanyajuwa <laughs> 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 Shaket kwa na tamari wewe msika anzwa. Yes. Ajitendiru wena mngari. Yes. Dosa ka mchona kutima twins akashwa kwa na tamari. Mm. Hapana haka gona kupua zitara era. Yes. Nekuti baba waka msa zitare mwana wavo. Mm. Shinyo reva utiva mningina wa mwana wavo. Mm. Ajite. Ajite. Saka wana wavari tu fares na zara. Yes. Vana wa juda. Yes. Hava kwenye kuenda kuna era. Azid. So today, era arm pain, you are to what you are fun. Funny in Avaco. Shinigacha superior, a papo, Europa, Rababa, and Dora Gushanda. Yes. Saga Fanana near Ephraim Namanas. That over Kuru, Kuna Ruben. Chagushanda, a papo, a papo, a adoption. Yes. Shuna is adoption, a family duty. Family duty, yes. Mufuns one day now, Elden, do you? What kind of people were they? Remember, Taka Pedzira Guerenga, now we are Judah by Genesis 38. Yes. She's Judah, Akanga Asisadi. Yes. Kupa Shela Kunatama. Yes. Vana Vana Guziva, which is Sisiri, would do one a Judah. Kuti tamar na shela wa sangani. Yes. Asisho kuti zitara era lirove. Juda na umbo shiramba. Yes. 
Jokuti dai juda anga asiri baba wari responsible. Mm. Di anga dai anga to furira shela. Yes. Kuti chisi ana ne jamko mo agosh era. Mm. Meno jake taka mbutra ya unza taka to mbutra ba mko mo agu onani. Ngo tu onani wano nita. Yes. Taka bura na na mungarwa ka ora ya naiko. Mm. But we have done our part. Yeah. Iwewe shela can aurora focus on your family. No. Oh. Mm. A family duty is a family duty. Yes. A was a crown prince, and the name of a crown prince cannot disappear. Yes. Shela was duty bound yes. to raise his seed yes. for his own brother, yes. even with a different woman yes. other than his brother's widow. Yes. It is a family duty. Yes. There is the scripture. Yes. There is the scripture. So, of course, in verse number one of a. Uh, First Chronicles chapter number four, we see the sons of uh, Phares. We must know that we should also find the sons of Zera and then the sons of Shela. This is why we got to uh, verse number 21. But our purpose in coming to First Chronicles chapter four was to prove that Caleb is a Jew. Yes. He is a descendant of Judah. Just as David was a descendant of Judah. Yes. But we also came to First Chronicles chapter number 4 to show you that Caleb is not a direct descendant from the very same lineage of of uh, Boaz. This is why you don't find number one in this list. You don't find uh, Ezra. You don't find Aram. You don't find Aminadab. You don't find a, 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 a Nason. You don't find Salmon, the father of Boaz. You don't find Obed, you don't find Jesse in this genealogy. Which means they only share an ancestor. Yes. They are all descendants of Pharaohs, yes. but they came from different patriarchs. Yes. Notwithstanding, there is nothing wrong for David to marry <laughs> Abigail. Yes, yes. Because they are all from the tribe of Judah. Bana wa Judah. Yes. Aguman. Pani chini ni zera. Abana. Kureva kuti na bari mu Judah. Aya ya. Eda. As my Kungu Dengue, my Kungu Dengue. When I was Judah, no shine, Jacob Day. Yeah. All right. I wanted you to go back to Joshua. I don't know why I ended up uh, not coming back to this one. We were reading Joshua chapter. Chapter 14. Let's read it again, verse number 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephune, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, yes. concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Yes. Forty years old was I when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. Yes. And I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Yes. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance. So and God, Moses swore unto Caleb. Yes and said the land that he was going to trade with his feet yes. shall belong to Caleb, yes. 
and thy children forever. Yes. Because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. Yes. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. Yes. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses. Yes. While the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. Yes. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. Yes. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. Yes. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. Yes. For war both to go out and to come in. Yes. Now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. All right. So Hebron, verse number 13. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh. Joshua blessed Caleb the son of Jephunneh. Hebron, yes. Hebron for an inheritance. Joshua gave Caleb Hebron for an inheritance. Yes. Huh? Yes. What is that? Yes, because we, we, we know that Hebron uh, is the town that David later uh, built his city. Second Samuel chapter 2. Yes. From verse 1. Yes, Second Samuel chapter 2 from verse 1. And it I came want to, to pass. Drive. It's not going to be long. We are going to find it exciting very soon. <laughs> And it yes. came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go up? And he De said, go So David, after the death of Saul, yes. he asked God yes. where he should go yes. and govern the children of Israel. Yes. Read again. And it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? Yes. And the Lord said unto him, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? Yes. And the Lord said unto him, And the Lord said unto, Josh, and unto David, Go up, and David said, Whither shall I go up? David asked God, Where can I go up? And he said, Unto Hebron. God said, Go to Hebron. So David went up thither, and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelites, and Abigail, Nabal's wife, the Camelite. Verse 11. And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Again. And the time that David was in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Ah, 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 ah. Are you joining things here? Yes. Who was given Hebron? To whom does Hebron belong? Yes. According to Joshua chapter 14, verse 13, Joshua blessed Caleb, yes. the son of Jephunneh, yes. of the tribe of Judah, yes. and gave him Hebron yes. for an inheritance. Yes. Hebron belongs to Caleb. Yes. The son of Jephunneh. Yes, of the <laughs> tribe of Judah. <laughs> and when David started governing, yes. he prayed to God. Yes. Where can I go to govern? In Hebron. God said, go to Hebron. Yes. And according to verse 11, he ruled over the tribe of Judah seven years, six months in Hebron. Yes. That's clear, right? Yes. Joshua chapter 15, verse 13. And unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh, he gave a part among the children of Judah according to the commandments of the Lord to Joshua, even the seat of Abba, the father of Anak, which city is Hebron. Which city is? Hebron. All right. Let us uh, read verse 17. And Othiniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, 
took it and he gave him Aksa, his daughter to wife. All right, again, verse 17. And Othinio. Start, start from verse number 14. And Caleb drove thence the three sons of Anak. The three sons of Anak were driven by Caleb. Sheshai. Sheshai. And Ahim. Ahiman, Ahiman, and Taumai, Taumai, the children of Anak. Caleb. And he went up thence to the inhabitants of Debe. Debe. And the name of Debe before it was Kijath Sefa. Yes. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kijath Sefa, he that smiteth Kijath Sefa, and taketh it to him, will I give Aksa, my daughter, to wife. In why moons we are not tender. Caleb Akati, yes. Ano uraya vanu vese, vemu kija tisefa. Yes. Akaritora. Yes. Ndi champa mwanasika na wangu aksa. Yes. Kutamu rore. Yes. What happened? And Othinio, the son of Kenaz. Othinio, the son of Kenaz. The brother of Caleb. The brother of Caleb. Took it. Took it. And he gave him aksa, his daughter, to wife. Whom did uh, uh, Caleb give his daughter to wife? Was, uh, Othinio was the son of uh, Caleb's brother. Which means Othinio yes. is a nephew of Caleb. Yes. Mwana wa mninina wa Caleb. Yes. Othinio akasuka mapa Caleb. Pampa papa papa ake. Yes. Pataka piwa njati akaka murora. Yes. Mayra ngara na wejo. Yes. Ina wechi zayo. Ye purity ye nyika. Yes. Ne kuchenge tika kwe land. Yes. Because au puwe land kano jino tora mtoro. Yes. My bad. Yes. All right. What happened? And it came to pass as she came unto him that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted off her ass. And Caleb said unto her, what wouldest thou? Who answered, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. Yes. And he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. 20. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families. So, can we say Caleb gave her daughter land? <laughs> no. <laughs> huh? It just stayed within the family. It was given to Othinio. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Othinio simply said to his wife, yes. talk to your father. Yes. Let us give these springs of get these springs of water yes. again. Yes. But I want us to focus on verse 20. Yes. This is the inheritance yes. of the tribe of the children of Judah yes. according to their families. Yes. 21. And the uttermost cities of the tribe of the children of Judah towards the coast of Edom, yes. southward the way, Kabziu, Kabziu, Eda, Eda, and Jega, Jega, and Kina, Kina, and Dimo, Dimona, Dimona, and Adada. All right, let's jump all these scriptures. Yes. Let's go to verse 55. Maon, Camel, and Ziv, and Juta. Ah. Eh? <laughs> and Jezreel, and Jogdiam, and Zanoa. Let, let's end there. We were looking for the word Camel. Yes. Huh? Elder. Yes. And what? And camel. Camel. Ma, maon, maon and camel, zif, zif and, and juta. Yes. To whom does camel belong? To the tribe of Judah. To the tribe of Judah. So when we come to First Samuel 25, huh? the Bible <laughs> says, and Samuel died. Yes. And all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house at Rama. Yes. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And it, there was a man in Maon <laughs> whose possessions were in Camel. 
Joshua 15:55. Maon, Carmel, and Ziph, and Judah. Yes. Huh? Can we put them side by side? Joshua 15:55 and 1 Samuel 25 verse number 2. There are no ambiguities. Yes. Elder. It's clear. Nabal yes. is a Jew. He's a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> He's staying in the land of his father. His fathers. <laughs> yes. I don't know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Yes. You can hear Namu Amchen. You know what I'm saying. You can say Namu Amchen. Yeah. She can't go veering. It's the doing of the Lord. It's grace. <laughs> Yeah, boss. Yeah, just to imagine. Could... <laughs> so, believers, this is where we were coming to. Yes. All these years and all these sermons we have preached so far. Yes. About David marrying Abigail. Yes. Who used it to be Nabal's wife. Yes. <laughs> huh? This is the climax. <laughs> this is the. This is where we were coming to. Yes. We can't exhaust. There's so much to learn. Yes. We can only learn what the Lord has revealed to us. Yes. So the story in First Samuel 25 is, after David took care of Nabal's sheep and cattle, yes. he was angry with his servants. Yes. He sent his servants to Nabal asking for food. Yes. Nabal said. I won't give you a dime. Yes. Why are servants running away from, these, from their masters these days? Yes. And David was not happy. Yes. He said to his servants, every man, his sword. We are going to kill Nabal yes. and all his household. Yes. In verse 13. Yes. And when Abigail heard what had happened, that Nabal was mean to David, Abigail ran to meet David. And Abigail, we persuaded David not to kill Naba. Yes. But Abigail brought food, so much food to David. Yes. And that day, David, in verse 35, what does the Bible say? So David received of ye hand that which she had brought him. Yes. And said unto ye. And David said unto Abigail, Go up in peace to thine house. Go up in peace to your house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice. I have heard your voice. And have accepted thy person. I have accepted your advice. And Abigail came to Nabal. Abigail came to Nabal. And behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And ah. Nabal's heart. What would was... stop Nabal from <laughs> throwing parties? Nabal always holds parties. He's a rich man. He's very rich. There's nothing that stops Nabal yes. from throwing feasts and parties. Yes. Every time yes. you come to Nabal's <laughs> house, it's either they are planning a party <laughs> yes. or they are resting yes. from the previous party. Yes. Can you imagine that Nabal threw a party without his wife? Yeah. <laughs> the Bible says. When Abigail came to Nabal, yes. there was already a party. He did indeed his wife to hold a party. Yeah, so this is true to his character. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. What about Nabal's heart? Yes. <laughs> and Nabal's heart was merry within him. Of course, he was excited, always jovial. For he was very drunken. He was very drunken. Wherefore, she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. She said, I can't tell him that I gave David food. You almost got everyone killed in this house yes. because of your stubbornness. Yes. Verse 37. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after that the Lord smote Nabal that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord that had pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and he had kept his servant from evil. For the Lord had retained the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. 
and David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. 14. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Camel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. Yes. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. And Abigail hasted and arose and rode upon an ass with the five damsels of his that went after her. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. Let's end there. I, I just wanted to share you, with you something that seemed very amazing to me. When the servants of David say to Dave, to Abigail, we were sent by David to take you to become his wife. Abigail said, Behold, let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. She said, Can you allow me to host you? Yes. This was not about asking for a permission to wash their feet. She was simply saying, allow me to host you. Yes. Because this intorage was not going to be a same day program. Yes. They had to spend some hours and probably a day or two. Yes. While it's Abigail was packing his staff, yes. preparing to leave yes. to go to become David's wife. Yes. Do you understand this? Yes. So I want you to keep this information I have already given you about David being a brother yes. to Nabal. Yes. And ask three questions. Did David know that the camel belongs to his tribal family? Nabal is a brother. We are all children of Judah. Did David know? If David knew this, why did he not run into Nabal's house as he was fleeing from Saul? Because his soul is a Benjamite. Yeah. Nabal is a Jew. Yeah. David is a Jew. Why couldn't David seek refuge, yeah. seek safety from Nabal's house? The third question is, did David know naturally beforehand that Nabal was a wicked man? Now, this question is arising because of the following two factors. Factor number one, David offered a service, an unsolicited service, to justify his demand for food. Yes. Brothers, don't treat each other like that. When you listen to what David said to Nabal through his servants, he was basically demanding a payment for already tendered services. And this is not far-fetched. Now listen to what uh, David said his servant to say to Nabal. Verse 5. And David sent out ten young men, and David said unto the young men, Get you up to Camel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. Yes. And thus shall ye say to him, Say these words to Nabal, that liveth in prosperity. Of course, Nabal lives in prosperity, it's not a secret. Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all thou that thou hast. Yes. And now I have heard that thou hast share us. Yes. Now thy shepherds which were with us, your shepherds which were with us, we heard them not. We did not attack them. Neither was they aught missing unto them. Nothing is missing among your sheep and your livestock. All the while they were in, in cameo. Yes. Ask thy young men. You can ask your own servants. And they will show thee. They can testify we are telling the truth. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes. Yes. For we come in a good day. Yes. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand unto thy servants and to thy son David. Give us food. So the narrative was we took care yes. of your shepherds. Yes. It's now time for you to pay back. Yes. And the question is, 
if David wanted to be treated by Nabal as a brother, he couldn't have rendered these services beforehand. Huh? The same happened when Moses was passing through the land of Edom. Yes. The Bible says God commanded them that they were not going to eat anything for free yes. in the land of Edom. Yes. They were going to pay for everything that they were going to take from there because God did not want them to get anything for free from the Edomites. Because God hated the Edomites. Yeah. You can find that from Numbers chapter 20, from verse 14. We don't have time to look into those scriptures. Yeah. But Esau is a brother to Jacob. And yet God asked Jacob to pay even for water. Yeah. They have a brotherhood which is not genuine. Yeah. You understand? Now, the second reason why I am saying, did David already know that Nabal is a wicked man? We say the first reason is he offered the service yes. and said, based on the services yes. I've offered, yes. I protected your livestock yes. in Mount Carmel yes. all these days. Ask your young man, yes. give me food yes. for the services I've offered. Yes. That is not how brothers take care of each other yes. brothers do not charge each other yes. for such relief in a time of distress yes a brother is willing to offer help when you are in trouble simply because you are my flesh and my bone yes the second reason is there is not even a single mentioning of the word brother throughout the conversations between David and Naba. This is my investigation, and this is because the Lord said, investigate Naba further. <laughs> He's a brother to David. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and watch it. There is always constructive similarities in the scriptures, which is worth investigating. Whenever there is a brotherhood that is not in, 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 in established in godliness, yes. God makes that brotherhood suspicious. Yes. Look at it. When Jacob heard that Esau was coming to meet with him, Genesis 32, 33, yes. the Bible says he rearranged his family and sent his servants to meet with Esau. And in the meanwhile, Jacob prayed to God yes. and said, May Esau not kill me, Lord. Esau is out on killing me. The arrangement was not brotherly. You don't bribe your brother with livestock for him not to kill you. But Jacob bribed Esau yes. with livestock. Yes. The same way David bribed Nabal with yes. a service yes. to get food yes. from Nabal. But most suspicious is the fact that just like in the Jacob and Esau meeting in Genesis, where Esau sees Jacob's servants first. Mm. Who are you? We are servants of Jacob. Where is he? He's behind us. What does he say? Well, he sends us these gifts. He says, please don't kill me. Yes. David does not make an attempt to come to Nabal's house. He sent 10 of his young men. Yes. As a brother, couldn't they have had a better conversation if they met brother to brother? Yes. Was David suspecting that Nabal was likely going to reject his request? And it made sense yes. that David would not go because he was going to kill Nabal immediately. Yeah. So he said, let me send my young man, pay adventure, he would reverence me. You understand my investigation? So, so what David knew of Nabal's wickedness. He knew just, that Nabal is a wicked man. Just like Jacob knew of Esau. Just house. like Jacob knew that Esau is a wicked man. Yes. Are you following believers? 
Yay! <laughs> That's exciting. But much more exciting is the number of days after this encounter, and then God killed Naba. How many days after? The Bible says 10 days. Yes. And how many servants did David send to Nabal? 10. 10. <laughs> That's not normal. <laughs> we all know that the number 10 yes. is a number of the law. Yes. Which means when God presented this matter, yes. he wanted us to talk about yes. the law. Yes. The law of Moses. Yes. And Christ <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yes, uh, <clears throat> it's now becoming clear. It's now. clear, now. Right? Yes. Now, let us construct this and conclude this. Number one, Saul represents the law of Moses. Yes. And Nabal also represents the children of Israel who are leading in the law of Moses. Yes. Because Saul has not yet died yes. in First Samuel chapter 25. Yes. Whatever the story of Nabal means, yes. it must be located during the 33 years yes. of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth. Yes. Because David at this point had already been anointed yes. to be king over Israel, yes. but he had not yet sat on the throne. Yes. Our Lord speaks in Luke chapter 4 verse 18, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And yet he had not yet sat on the throne. Yes. According to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11 and 12, he is seated on the throne waiting until his enemies are made a footstool. Yes. You understand? Yes. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Yes. Which means... Jesus is represented by David. Yes. He has already been anointed to become king over Israel, yes. but he has not yet sat on the throne. Yes. His conversation with Nabal yes. is his conversations with the leaders of the church of Israel. Yes. Give me food. Yes. If you refuse to give me food, I will kill you. <laughs> and of course I have to kill you yes. because I want to marry this beautiful woman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of beauty does Abigail have? Beautiful, understanding, and yet married to an idiot. All right. Matthew 21, this is where this, the message will end. Jesus had a conflict with the Jews. Yes. Verse 23 says, And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him yes. as he was teaching and said, yes. By what authority doest thou these things? Who came to Jesus? The chief priests. The chief the priests, yes. By what authority doest thou the these things? The chief priests and the elders came to Jesus and said, By what authority do you do these things? And who gave thee this authority? Who gave you this authority? Yes. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I in like. I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. Yes. The baptism of John, whence was it from heaven or of men? Yes. And they reasoned within themselves. They saying, reasoned within themselves, saying what? If we shall say from heaven. If we say from heaven. He will say unto us. Yes. Why did you not then believe him? Yes. But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. Yes. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. All right. So this is the conversation. Yes. But there are two groups of people yes. coming with this very tempting question. Yes. By what authority do you do these things? Yes. And who gave you this authority? Yes. The Pharisees, the chief priests actually, and the, and the elders. elders. Yes. The chief priests Yes. And the elders. Yes. Are these not the leaders of the house of Israel? They are. Huh? 
They are the leaders. Now, just looking a little bit at Matthew 23, the Lord castigated the Pharisees and the scribes which are also known as the elders yes. in Israel. Yes. In verse number 13, he says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of, of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering in to enter. So if you look at verse number, um, verse number 17, he calls them fools. Just like Abigail described her husband, uh, Nabal, as a man of Belial in verse 25. Yes. Abigail said to, to David, Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, yes. even Nabal. Yes. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. Yes. The word folly, it means foolishness. Yes. It also means mischief. Yes. Nabal means mischief. Yes. You understand? Yes. So our Lord describes the Pharisees, the chief priests, and the elders of Israel as fools, as fools yes. blind guides. And in one point in John chapter 2, he described them as thieves when he found them turning the house of prayer, the temple, into a den of thieves after they started allowing trades to be up to be done in the temple yes. where there were changers of money yes. as well as selling of sacrifice animals. Yes. In the temple, all of them, Sadducees, Pharisees, scribes, elders, Chief priest, yes. he described them as blind, foolish, wicked hypocrites. Just like Abigail described Nabal. her husband, Nabal. All right. Look at this picture, my dear. How do we describe Nabal? Number one, he is great. He is rich, yes. but he is wicked yes. and harsh. Yes. How does that picture of uh, appear, how does it resonate with the character of the chief priests and the character of the Pharisees? Are they not rich? They are. They are rich? Yes. They are rich with the law. Yes. They are rich with the traditions of the elders. Yes. They are also rich with the money. Yes. Because of their own corruption. Yes. But they are also very evil. Yes. Because they are partially applying the law. They are tilting the scale of justice to their own advantage. Yes. In Matthew chapter 12 and Matthew chapter 15, the Lord accused them of rendering the word of God of none effect because of the traditions of their elders. Yes. Perverting judgment for their own material gain. Can you see that? Yes. But the beauty of Abigail is talking about the well-structured nature of the way of worship in the system of the law. Yes. Oh, Abigail is beautiful. <laughs> Look at the system of worship. Yes. Look at how smartly dressed yeah. and well meticulously presented is the high priest of Israel. Yes. Look at the order of divine service. Yes. Look at the holy place. Look at the outer court. Look at the instruments of worship. Yes. Of course, the church of Israel is beautiful. And the Lord spoke about the beauty of Abigail in Matthew chapter 23, verse number uh, 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Okay, okay, okay. Let, let's, let's read rather verse 28 from verse 27. 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Hypocrites, why? For you are like unto white sepulchres. You are like unto beautiful tombs. Which indeed appear beautiful outward. Outwardly, the church of Israel is beautiful. What about inside? But are within full of dead men's bones. But inside the church of Israel, there is no soul that is clean in the eyes of God. And of all uncleanness. You are full of all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Doesn't the chief priest look righteous outwardly unto men? But within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. To prove that even the chief priest of Israel can be also a, a, a found wanting on verse 27 and 8, 28 of Matthew 23. I would like to read you Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26 to 27. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, and defiled, separated from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Who, who, who needed what? Who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Thank for you. Thank you. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Yes. So verse 27 says, we have an high priest who is holy, yes. separate from sinners, yes. who needs not daily as those high priests yes. to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins, and then for the people. Yes. So the priest of Israel yes. did not only offer sin, sacrifice for the sins of the people. The first sacrifice on the day of Yom, Yom Kapeh yes. was for the high priest. Yes. Apparently, despite all that beauty of the effort, the meter, the breastplate of just, 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 just judgment, the two onyx stones, all those things, were beautiful that the high priest dressed himself with. Yes. Inside, yes. he was still a sinner. Yes. This is why every day of atonement, he had to offer a sacrifice for his own sins. Yes. This is the beauty of Abigail, but married to a, a vile, wicked man. Yes. You understand? Yes. But David must marry this woman. But he can't unless he dies. But the question is, is he allowed to marry Abigail? The answer is yes. yes. David is a near kinsman. Yes. He can resuscitate <laughs> this marriage. Yes. He can take Abigail yes. easily. Yes. But concerning Matthew 21, we didn't read it to highlight this matter I have highlighted now. So far, we read from verse 23. We wanted to see to whom was Jesus speaking? Yes. The chief priests, yes. who are the most senior leaders yes. of the church of Israel. Yes. If they were just the priests, it could have been better. Yes. These were the chief priests. Yes. Verse 23 again. And when he was come into the temple, yes. the, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and saying, Let's end there. They asked him, By what authority yes. are you doing all these things? Yes. Do you know, believer, that the reason why Nabal refused to, re, to, 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 to pay David or to give David food or to receive David or to be hospitable to David, it was because Nabal had no idea about the identity of David. So he was asking by what authority? <laughs> what authority <laughs> do you ask food from me? Yes. By the way, by the way, look at me. I know people are going to watch this video. Yes. By the way, tell me, believers, what kind of a man was Nabal who did not know David? Do you know that, do you know that seven chapters 
before chapter 25, the whole country of Israel could have become a colony of Philistine. Yes. Because the valley of Ela a rule of engagement was that if Goliath had defeated David, yes. the whole nation of Israel yes. was going to become a colony of Philistine. Yes. Which means notwithstanding this fun and pomp that Nabal showers is himself with in his sorry life every day, yes. this wealth that he boasts with could have been easily taken away if yes. David had not killed Goliath. Yes, in chapter 17, yes. David defeated Goliath. And this is the basis of his troubles with the soul. Yes. Which means even if David had not done a single thing to protect Nabal's wealth, mm -hmm. Nabal owed David his own life. Yes, because Goliath had said, I need a man. One in, man. Including Nabal himself. If Nabal was a man, <laughs> yes. so could he have not been waiting his pains the way he was doing. Yes. In the fear of the great Goliath, yes. it was David yes. who faced off and defeated Goliath. Yes. How come all these exploits we already have in David's life? Mm. Nabal has no idea. Who David is. Yeah. The answer is. He's a foolish man. Yes. <laughs> foolish men don't know nothing. Do foolish men know anything? They don't know A anything. foolish man knows nothing. Yes. And this is why the Lord is saying, you are fools, you Pharisees. Yes. You understand? Yes. In verse 17 of Matthew 23, yes. he says, you are fools, you are blind guides. In John chapter 5, verse 39, he said, search the scriptures, for in them... You think you have eternal life. Yes. They are they which testify of me. Yes. Didn't the women sing songs praising David they for did. defeating the Philistines? How come <laughs> Nabal has the guts, mm. the audacity, yes. the temerity yes. to ask the credentials of David? What kind of a man <laughs> are you? Yes. And now I can read the scripture in 1 Samuel 25 that proves to you that the ignorance of Nabal concerning the identity of David yes. is not justified outside his foolishness. Yes. Only his foolishness justifies his ignorance. Yes. Let me show you. Let's hear what Abigail said to David. 1 Samuel 25, verse 26. Yes. Now, therefore, my Lord, this is Abigail speaking to David, as the Lord liveth, as God lives, and as thy soul liveth, as your soul live, seeing the Lord is withholding thee from coming to shed blood. God is withholding you from coming to kill Nabal, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand. Don't kill Nabal with your own hand. Now let thine enemies, and they that seek evil to my Lord, be as Nabal. God will deal with Nabal on your behalf. Yes. And now this blessing which then handmaid hath brought unto my Lord. Let it even be given unto the young man that follows my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid. Yes. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. God will certainly establish the house of David. Because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord. Oh. And if we had not been found in thee all thy days. God, listen to Abigail. God yeah. will make you a, a king. Yes. Because you are fighting the battles of God. Yes. And you have never done anything evil yes. all your days. Yes. Is not Abigail wise. Abigail is wise. Verse <laughs> <laughs> 29. Yet a man is a reason to pursue thee. Abigail begins to talk about his soul. Yes. She says, how is his soul pursuing to kill you? Yes. When he say, she said a man in verse 29, yes. she was referring to soul. Yes. yes. And to seek thy soul. Yes. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. Abigail and, says, no one will kill you. <laughs> Your soul is in the hands of God. You are safe. And the souls of thine enemies, yes. them shall he sling out 
is out of the middle of she the started sling. prophesying she started to prophesy that so shall die did you yes. see that yes <laughs> it was said in when verse 26 <laughs> abigail said naba will die yes in verse 29 yes. abigail said so will die yes verse 30 and it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he had spoken concerning thee. Abigail started to say, God said he wanted to make you king. It will happen. Yes. yes. And shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel. And in verse 31, the last part says, But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. Did you know <laughs> that the idea to marry Abigail came from Abigail? <laughs> Just like what Ruth did when she came to <laughs> Did <laughs> not Ruth ask him, ask him, Boaz. ask Boaz to marry him? <laughs> she did. <laughs> Don't forget, I am married to a foolish man yeah. who will die very soon. Please remember me. Yes. Yes. Abigail knows she can't date David. Yes. She will be called an adulteress yes. while Nabal is alive. Yes. She was applying Romans 7. Yes. We can't do anything. Yes. The same words yes. that Boaz said to Ruth, yes. I can't touch you, Ruth. Yes. We have to meet with the immediate relative, yes. and then I can marry you. Yes. Read verse number, read verse number um, 31b, which I had just read. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. All right. Remember, remember me. Kana mngara kuisa pachi garewe Daviti uya uzondurora. Is not Abigail representing the Jews, which are in the law? When you have risen from the dead yes. and sat on the throne, yes. don't forget to marry the Jews. Yes. And this is why the Lord said to the apostles, yes. when you start preaching, yes. start from Jerusalem. Yes. I made a promise to this woman. <laughs> yes. But there's a very exciting development that took place yes. in which the very words that Abigail spoke yes. to David, yes. asking him to remember her, yes. they were done, they were repeated word for word. In Luke 23, verse 39, Jesus is on the cross. There are two thieves, one on his right, one on his left. Yes. What does verse 39 say? And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save yourself and us. Is he not a type of number? He's a type of number. <laughs> <laughs> but the other answering rebuked him. <laughs> saying, does not thou fear God, <laughs> seeing thou art in the same condemnation, yes. and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. Yes. But this man has done nothing amiss. Yes. Didn't Abigail tell David, yes. you have done nothing amiss? Yes, he did. And what did he say in verse 42? And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Yes. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. You see? Yes. Is this not an, a request? A request the thief said to Jesus, Lord, yes. remember me yes. when you are come into thy kingdom. Just like what Put the words of Abigail there. <laughs> 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 now, was this yes. man not a Jew elder? He was a Jew. He was a Jew? Yes. Abigail said, but when the Lord shall have dwelt, dealt well with my Lord, yes. then remember thine handmaid. Remember me? <laughs> I like the word remember the yes. same words. Yes. Kanama kutonga. Yes. Kanama garapachi garo. Mundirangarire. Yes. Sate zire na bararo vau. Uimba vairi pa mchinji. Kwa yakati msate zire mchinda umbia ungwa anura sikawe. Yes. 
Timi mambo. Munotonga manji manji. Karama kutonga. Mundi rangarire. Akwamana. So in Luke 23, it comes out open. Both what Nabo said. Yes. And what Abigail said. And what Abigail said. Yes. Was one of the malefactors said something. Uh, was not Nabo a malefactor? <laughs> he was. Was, it not a, was he not an evil man? He was an evil man. Yes. So we, we read Abigail's words to David yes. to show you that apart from foolishness, yes. nothing else yes. but Nabo. From knowing David. Yes, yeah, it was only foolish. <laughs> <laughs> what gave all this knowledge to Abigail? Number one, God has made David a king. Yes. He's going to rule very soon. Number two, David is a righteous man. Yes. He has done nothing wicked. Yes. Abigail knows this information. Yes. But her husband doesn't know it. Yes. This is why the Bible says, he was a man of evil and wickedness. Yes. He was childish. Childish, yes. Semuna anungu gararu kumapati, so anu ziziva say, shirukitika kuhondo, ku valley of Ela, shirukitika kupala kwa sauro. Ha, ziziva nabari. Kuna nabari, munuwe saka ipa. Ia ni marizake, he doesn't need anyone. Yes. You understand? I don't want to continue. But I can't go, I can't let you go without showing you why exactly did we open Matthew 21. It's, it's amazing what the Lord reveals. Why would the Bible tell us that the question we have in verse 23 was raised by the chief priests? These are the custodians of the law. If there are people who must know the prophecies concerning the coming Messiah, it must be the chief priests. Yes. They are the legal custodians of the law yes. of God. Yes. They are not imposters, yes. like the Sadducees, mm. the Pharisees, and the scribes in the, in, in the Sanhedrin. These ones were appointed by God. Yes. How come they ask Jesus by what authority? He doeth his work. But this is not a, a new thing. Not at all. In John chapter 1, verse 19, this same thing happened. Yes. They are like Nabal, they know nothing about David. And this is the record of John. Yes. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? Huh? Can you imagine that the Jews, not the chief priests, the Jews yes. sent chief priests yes. <laughs> and Levites yes. from Jerusalem yes. to ask John who, are thou? who he is. Can you imagine <laughs> that the leaders of the church were sent by the congregation <laughs> to ask John who he was? Mm, but now, if they don't know who John is, yes. how can they know who Jesus is? Because it was John who was given the task yes. to introduce Jesus yes. to the Jews. Yes. And they, these priests are the custodians of Malachi chapter 4. What about Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6? Yes. What about Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14? Yes. What about Deuteronomy chapter 18? Yes. They are the custodians. Yes. They know Isaiah chapter 40, yes. which spoke about the coming of John the Baptist. Yes. They know about it. Yes. They know Malachi chapter 3. Yes. A voice shall cry in the wilderness. Yes. Malachi chapter 4, yes. I will send you Elijah in those days. Yes. But they still ask him, who are you? No. Yes. Just like Nabal, yes. the chief priest know nothing. Yes. Just like Nabal. Yes. And as we all know in 1 Samuel 25, the solution is they must die. Yes. So in Matthew 21, all the parables that are in, in the red font from verse 23, Jesus was responding to the chief priests. In verse number 28, he gave a parable of a certain man who had two sons. 
But what thing ye, a certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, yes, yes. go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. Yes. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go say, and went not. Yes. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. Did, did the, will. the will of his father. And they said the first. Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the hallows go into the kingdom of God before you. The word you in verse 31 is referring to whom? To the priest and the elders. To the chief priests and elders. Yes. That's important. Yes. Let's jump the issues he has discussed with them in verse 2, in verse 32. But in verse 32, he spoke about John. He said, for John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And you, when you had seen it, repented not afterward, that you might believe him. Is he speaking to everyone? No. To the chief priest. Yes. So John the Baptist, I'm ending now, John the Baptist is represented in the Nabal story by the ten men of David yes. that is sent to Nabal. Yes. They were sent to talk to Nabal. To Nabal. And he refused to listen. Uh -huh. Just like the chief priest refused to act. Jesus said, I sent John to you. Yes. You believed not John yes. for you to be saved. Yes. You don't believe. Yes. And this scripture gives us goosebumps when we hear Jesus telling the leaders of a church yes. that they need to repent. Yes. <laughs> but Kurve Church here, Israel, Vakanzina yes. Jesu. How do you deal with this when Jesus sends a preacher yes. to your pastor yes. for him to repent? How do you deal with that? Makafekai for the ragoman. Mons go mara, she tinda kaku tu mirai Joan asina effort. Huh? Ruins go say. <laughs> Mwine gaun sengir no fe kona krisi ria ria. Yes. Mutu miru wachuenga asina gaun. Yeah. Kutum tende oke. Okay. Yes. Mwine kola pa uruechi pasta. Yes. Mutu miru wa pasta asina kola. Yes. Aka feka bajke rema kushenga mera. Yes. Ne banyirele ganda mchuno. Yes. Achichika wiza so. Imuri mlampo gin. Yes. Mutu miru wa rukichika wiza. <laughs> Mwarova. Tindaka kutumira ya asina lampo gin. Kutum tende oke okay, mkaramba. Because you can, you can just picture the the picture of the ten men deaf oh, sent yes. and how big Nabal was. Ah, <laughs> he needed the ten men yes. for him to repent. Yeah. Verse thirty three. Yeah, another parable. There He's was talking a, to the chief priests and the elders. Don't forget. Yes. There was a certain household which planted a vineyard and hedged it around about and digged a wine press in it. Yes. And built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. Do you see that the parable begins with the householder doing work? Yes. Just as David in Mount Carmel, he started by saving. Nabal's livestock yes. from the marauding hyenas yes. and the predators of the forest. Yes. The parable begins with the householder planting a vineyard, yes. hedging it round about, yes. digging a wine press, yes. building a tower, yes. and then letting it to the husbandmen, yes. wenting in and going into a faraway country. Yes. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen yes. that they might receive the fruits of it. <laughs> <laughs> but when the time of David came near yes. for him to eat, yes. did he not send servants to Naba? He sent servants. Look at the parable. <laughs> I can tell you today <laughs> that this parable yes. is referring to the story of Naba. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the householder is God. Yes. Is Jesus. Yes. The work that the householder did is equal yes. to the work that David did yes. of taking care of Nabal's livestock. Yes. But when the time came for David to receive fruit for his work, yes. 
He sent his servants to Naba. Yes. Just like this yes. householder who sent messengers yes. to, the, to the hired husbandmen. Yes. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. You see now? Yes. These are now the chief priests and the Pharisees yes. and the children of Israel yes. who murdered the prophets of God. Yes. The servants of David were ill-treated by Nabal. Yes. yes. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. Yes. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, Yes. They will reverence my son. Jesus is here. He's talking to the chief priest. Yes. After you rejected John the Baptist. Yes. Because in verse 32, yes. he said, God sent John the Baptist yes. for you to repent. Yes. You didn't. Yes. Finally, God said, maybe they rejected John. Yes. I will send Jesus, my son. Yes. Maybe they will believe Jesus. Yes. Yes. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, Yes. This is the heir. Yes. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. Yes. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard. They are going to cast him. out Jesus and kill him, yes. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh. What did God do to Nabal? That's what Jesus is asking in verse 40. Yeah. Under these circumstances, yeah. how does God react? Yeah. Verse 40. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? What did God do to Nabal? He killed Nabal. Listen to the, he asked it as a question. Yes. And the chief priest answered, verse 41. They say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen. Yes. We shall render him to the fruits of in their seasons. Aha. The chief priests are the ones which answered this question. Yes. They said, of course God will destroy the wicked man. Yes. Was not Nabal a wicked man? He was a wicked man. Did not God destroy Nabal? God did destroy Nabal. Remember David in verse 39 and 40, when he heard that Nabal died, he said, blessed be the Lord. Yes. That had pleaded the cause of my reproach from the end of Nabal, yes. and he has kept his servant from evil, the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. In the parable, do you not see, Elder, the Lord returning the wickedness of the husbandmen upon their own heads? Yes, the Lord did so. But what was the dispute all about? The dispute was not about the food that David was asking. The answer is to what exactly was God angry with Nabal about is not in 1 Samuel 25. It's in Matthew 21. The parable is of a householder yes. who planted a beautiful vineyard, yes. planted it, hedged it, <laughs> dig the wine press. The beauty of the vineyard in Matthew 21 yes, is summarized yes. in First Samuel chapter 25, verse 2 and 3. Yes. It's the beauty of, Nab of Abigail. Yes. Abigail is the issue. So the conflict is about. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is not about number. God wanted to take this vineyard yes. to a responsible husbandman. Yes. So David married Abigail, yes. and he had a wonderful marriage, yes. and there was a fruit in that marriage. Yes. Children were born. Yes. God was angry yes. because the wickedness of the husbandman was in ill-treating this woman. Yes. And when you read the story of Nabal and Abigail in 1 Samuel 25, you are more focused on how Nabal treated David you don't see how Nabal treated Abigail. <laughs> but when you look at how Abigail spoke about Nabal, yes. you can tell yes. that Abigail was fed up yes. of Nabal. <laughs> if your own wife says you are a wicked man, yes. even in your absence, 
To a man he has never, she has ma never met. Yeah. You are a wicked man. Yeah. She's tired of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Abigail told David, don't worry, mm. Naba will die very soon. Yes. Don't forget me, oh, I'm already <laughs> a widow. This man is dying very soon. <laughs> that is something that a woman is not allowed to do. Yeah. To look for a new husband in anticipation of the death of a present husband. She could not have done that. But we see it happening in the days of our Lord in his ministry of three years. We see the thief telling Jesus, remember me when you are now in your kingdom. It's a woman already securing a, a marriage in anticipation of the death of a current husband. We are talking about Romans chapter 7. We can't read it now. How many people did Jesus promise salvation in those three years? In my father's house are many mansions. In John chapter 7, he said, anyone who is thirsty, let him come to me. I'll give him water. And the Bible says he was talking about Holy Spirit. He had not yet given anyone Holy Spirit. What was stopping him? Well, he had not yet been glorified. What does that mean? It was simple. Yeah. Living water cannot be given to a woman who is still married to another man. Yeah. Your husband must die. Yeah. I will remember you. Yeah. He promised the Holy Spirit to the apostles. He could not have given them because the apostles were Jews who, according to the law, were still married to the Old Testament with their high priests. The end of the law happened on the cross. The Bible says, for where a testament is, there must needs also be the death of the testator. Yes. So Jesus is the testator of the New Testament. Yes. He can't marry if he doesn't become a testator. Yes. And yet he only becomes a testator when he dies. Yes. Finally, brethren, I've got a question. Tell me, I've been wondering, and this grips my heart. I want to know. Those who say we love Lord, the Lord Jesus, we love God, we want to go to heaven. We, we seek to know more about God. Tell me what kind of a woman Abigail was who leaves a mansion to follow a man who has no house living in the forest. With all the wealth we have read about Nabal, David is so broke, he can't even feed himself. And yet this is the man that Abigail says, remember me too. Our women are not this humble <laughs> who beg to be remembered by a pungu who can't even buy a small bread and a bottle of drink. David was hungry. He could not afford food. Yes. And yet Abigail, who brought food to a starving man, is begging to be remembered. Yes. There is no other scripture in the life of David that explains the manner in which Jesus functioned as a savior for those three years than the story of Abigail's marriage to David. It's so, it, it melts your heart. It causes you to bleed. You want to understand. When Jesus was asked by certain men, we want to follow you. Where do you live? His answer was, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. And yet, that's where you find the apostles like Peter saying, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou only hast the words of life. What better illustration to find in the Bible than that? What attracted Abigail to follow David? What attracted the apostles to stick to Jesus? What is the title of the message? Bye for now.